would like to go to square one. That can fuck up. Alex, why do you believe you chose not to apologize? He came over to me yesterday and been calm, then we would have spoken. You know why I stopped that though. You know why I stopped that. Yeah, let me just speak to Paul one sec. Let me speak to Paul <laughs> one to the side yesterday. I was thinking, this is my guy, we're gonna talk. He's gonna tell me why he thinks I've done wrong. But like I've been attacked and I just attacked back. Finn, I'm sorry for what I said to Sasha. Whether she accepts it or not, that's another story. Any normal situation, I think apologizing takes a lot towards the women, towards me that day, and let him come off like the good guy. So let me get this straight. So Sasha made a whole hoo-ha about Alex speaking to women incorrectly. And I mean, I was under the assumption that what she won was an apology for herself and maybe even for the women. So here's the thing. Alex obviously spent last episode, obviously last week Thursday, okay, apologizing to everybody that he did wrong, apart from Ross and Sasha, because Ross, as you heard him say, had obviously approached him in an incorrect manner. But despite that, he still goes off and at least apologizes today anyway so therefore he's apologized to everybody he did wrong but sasha had to be the one to say well yeah no i'm just gonna reject it now you know because i just don't want him to look like the good guy to be honest with you, i don't know how he would necessarily look like a good guy for apologizing you know at the end of the day if he apologized and you accept it you look like a good person for just letting bygones be bygones and moving on you now made yourself look like a bitter person because you haven't allowed it to to, to 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 you haven't allowed the situation to calm down you've allowed the situation just to continue just for the sake of continuing like if you're gonna fight for something well then when you get it be ready to at least receive it you know what i mean and then also on top of that you've got your husband here who's also acting bitter at the same time too so what you two are gonna act are gonna continue being bitter whenever somebody upsets you both are you never gonna be open to apologies like come on <clears throat> there's a time to be adults and clearly, Ross and Sasha don't know how to do that. I mean, Ross is just a freaking puppet in such a game, and that's just pathetic, but it is what it is. But anyway, now let's get into, you know, yeah, they're themselves. I declared what I did. I was disappointed in myself, and uh, it wasn't nice. This is going to take a lot for me to ever get that picture at my head of you throwing your wedding ring. Chester and leaving everything behind in Birmingham. It's too unstable for me. Would you say that was the first time that you questioned your future with Ross? Yeah, 100%. Wow. Yeah, and I was like, hey, what can I... Was just thinking that unpredictable behaviour could happen at any point again. My God, he's like, ugh, like, just so scared. All right, boom. At the end of the day, obviously, they both still decided to pick stay anyway, you know what I mean? But, um, like, I really want to know, when did Ross decide that he was going to leave this woman? Because you know he leaves her, right? I'm just really curious. I mean, <sighs> Ross is just disappointing me, to be honest with you. I've never, it, like, this guy has no backbone whatsoever. It's actually quite terrible. You know, it's shit <laughs> in a nutshell, you know? And it's kind of confusing because I thought Sasha would have wanted a man that stands on business. I thought she would have wanted a man that can, you know, tell her when she's wrong, correct her, you know what I mean? A man that's basically going to take charge, a man that isn't just always going to bend over to everything that she, she, she requests, you know, not somebody that she can bully. You know, personally, I thought she was probably going to want a man that really has that dominant side like her father. Because I'm pretty sure her father doesn't let the mother get away with everything. But then again, maybe he does, to be fair. But some men who do come across as if they are super tough, they be hella soft when it comes to their women. You know what I mean? They be hella submissive. So maybe that's supposed to be a role model. She's been role model in life where daddy's always been submissive to mommy, but he's been hard in every other area. And maybe that's why she's okay with being a guy. She's being, she's okay being with a guy like a Ross that she can control, but also he can also, you know, back her up when it's necessary. I mean, listen, if that's what works for you, then that's what works for you. But I don't see how that is, how that is a positive thing for the man, depending on what type of man you're, you're dealing with. Clearly, her father is a guy who doesn't care. He will just do some madness for the sake of doing madness. And Ross, right now, the question is, would you, are you that guy too? I mean, you don't give me that vibe. But either way, though, at the same time, Ross has shown his fair share of aggression with throwing the wedding ring and also the way he's directed himself to Alex and whatnot. So maybe he would, maybe he's not too far different from her father. Either way, the dynamic, in my opinion, that, that's been displayed in Sasha's life is nothing but toxic. That's just the grand scheme of it. It's not healthy in, in any way, shape or form, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if your man can't, can't take charge and tell you when you're wrong sometimes and you, and you can't have civil conversations when he needs to, you know, check your behavior, then what the hell is going on here? 
It can't be a case of where he allows you to do everything that you want to do all the time and you t and then you're therefore putting him in, in uncomfortable situations all the time where he has to maybe fight other men or get in arguments when he doesn't need to. Like, come on. Someone needs to be the logical one. And that's just, yeah. But let's continue. Oh, yes. Before we get into Kieran, I'm, uh, listen, this Kieran part right here. Do you know what? Let me play it. My apologies. Let me play it. Play. I don't really want to be intimate with her. Commitment ceremony. And I explained how the PMDD was affecting me. But I've since realised that there's underlying areas where we're not similar, but often areas where we're not similar, but are quite important to me. I did, and I, I say, what's more important to you, finding a husband or pursuing something thing that you're really passionate about? And she said, finding a husband. Mm -hmm. And I went, this is why we're very different. I just wanted to find a wife who I want to spend the rest of my life with. What specifically are you petrified about? Wasting time with the wrong person. I'm, I'm scared, of, scared of giving someone me everything for it to not work out. But one thing I told myself is that I don't want to have to carry someone again. I don't know, it's just something that I've had in previous relationships. Yes, I was happy. Yeah, before we get into flipping, you know, angry Holly over here. So l last week, I sat here and I said, it's funny because someone in the comments said that, it said that, hey man, you don't know about PMD, you don't know about PMDD and you know, you need to just lay off him. You're being too harsh on him. <laughs> and then look what happened this week. This guy further when he went further on and proved my point. Okay. And I don't know if this person is still going to be in the comments or they still watch my videos, but this is the point that I was making. This man is unclear about what he wants when it comes to this woman. So therefore he should leave. Now that's what I said last week. I said at the end of the day, if he's unsure about how he's going to be able to cope with somebody or handle somebody or be with somebody that's got PMDD, yeah, then he should leave rather than wasting, um, what's her name? Rather than wasting Christina's time. Because at the end of the day, she doesn't deserve to be with somebody who is unsure if he can be around her, if he's unsure that he can, you know, yeah, 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 be around her. You know, she doesn't deserve that. She deserves someone who knows that he's ready to be with her and he's ready to to to, to face every single challenge that's gonna come her way, come their way because of the PMDD. Okay, that's what she deserves. But but I was thought I was being too harsh on this guy. Now listen, this is now my opinion this week, or at least today. <laughs> My opinion now is that this guy has made it worse. You know, he went from being unclear to now saying that he doesn't even want to sleep with her because he doesn't want to give us big signals. And that's just the beginning. The ice and the cake is now where he's saying he's afraid of the relationship because of his own freaking trauma. Listen, Christina is somebody that's PMD, PMDD, right? But she has not in any shape or form necessarily bought a certain level or a or, or like a heavy load of her trauma in this relationship. She has literally been in relations where people have left her because of the PMDD, right? She said before, but she has still been in a part of this experiment. She's taken 100% seriously, in fact, 110% seriously, you know what I mean? And she's really given it her all because she really wants things to work with this guy. Meanwhile, what is she getting in return? She's getting a guy that says one week, oh, I got a, I got a, I got a, I got a also in my mouth or whatever it was, so I can't kiss you. To then following up to saying, oh, I'm unsure, or, you know, if I if I'm 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 unsure because I don't know about the PMDD, right? Then now he's saying <laughs> I don't want to be intimate with her at, at all, you know. And then now he's saying also on top of that, oh, you know, I just I'm just having flashes of the past and I don't want to feel like I'm wasting my time. What the hell? You know, like this this gives you more further confirmation that clearly he is not into her now. It's not even about the PMDD. Now it's about the fact that he's just not interested. But he's talking about how, apart from the PMDD, there's other things that he's noticed that these two clash on, that these two don't have the same feeling on. Like, come on. Like, I called it last week that man should leave. And this week he has given the confirmation. If anybody sees otherwise, then I don't know what show you're watching because we're not watching the same thing. This guy is blatantly wasting her time. And the preview for the next episode? You already see him moving mad, you know, like, and she, he gets it all up in her feelings. She doesn't deserve this, does not deserve this, not at all, PMDD or not, she does not deserve to be with a guy like him because he's making it abundantly clear each week now that he's not interested, period. I don't know why he's staying on the show, he's been a fool. I said last week that I want to see him put leave this week, he didn't do it, but he needs to. Now, talking about leave... Obviously, Casper and Emma left. I haven't, I haven't included them in this week's in this video because of no point. Because literally, they spoke about the same shiz that they spoke about freaking for the past, well, since day one. So they've left, thankfully. 
You know what I mean? That was needed. But nonetheless, though, let's get into Alex and Holly now. That I've had in previous relationships. Yes, I was happy because it was one good week. But I thought, do you know what? Maybe it's getting better. The night that I decided I needed to get home, with Alex. We've got to the lift and he went, God, what's up with everyone? I went, some of us are missing our kids, Alex, because he turned around to me and went, fuck this, I can't be asked, I'm not coming. Respect for the fact I'm a mum. And then a comment was made about, why would you come on this experiment if you've got kids? I come on this experiment. You know what? Holly, she puts on a, a brave face and, you know, acts like everything's okay. You know what? Holly, she puts on a, a brave face and, you know, acts like everything's okay. So if Holly's missing her kids, how am I going to know that she's missing her kids? Husband, it's your duty of care to ask me, am I okay? Because I've sat I there on you... FaceTime to my children before, sobbing my eyes out. You didn't even look at me. I come off the phone. You didn't even speak to me. You didn't ask me if I'm okay. Do I want a hug? So this is my question. Why did you stay with him? See, this is the thing. Alex made a, made a very good point. He said that whenever these two have an issue, right? He said if he has an issue, he, he addresses it right then and there. When Holly has an issue, she sits on it, she goes quiet, doesn't say anything, and then brings up at some random point. Like, for example, she had an issue with their relationship. What did she do? She literally left, went home to see her kids, didn't even text him, didn't even tell him anything, and then came back like, boom, I'm ready, I'm ready to go to war. And that is a massive issue. So my question is this, Holly, why did you not bring it up? Now, she loves to use this excuse about the fact that Alex doesn't give her a voice, she doesn't feel heard. Okay, so why are you staying with somebody that doesn't allow you to have a voice and doesn't make you feel heard? And also on top of it, doesn't make you feel, doesn't, doesn't ask you about your kids. You're speaking about these things regarding your kids and not being heard as if like they're now, as, as if they've always been like super important, which respectfully they probably have been, but if they were that important, Ain't no one gonna stop you from saying what you gotta say, and ain't no one gonna stop you from saying that you wanna leave. Each and every week, this woman put stay. The fact that she's refused to take any form of accountability with the fact that she decided to stay is absolutely mad. She makes Alex look like a good guy in their relationship, to be honest with you. That's the grand scheme of it, but let's continue though, because boy, there's one line that Alex says, and for me personally, pff, that's when the whole conversation was done. Understand me now. Listen, don't try and come on here and put on some big act. You're not fooling nobody. Babe, you no. are a bullshitting bastard. I've had enough of your shit. I just have to say this. Yes, there's many things that this man needs to work on. But you've done all this up in his face at the same time. The flags from week one. Oh, you stayed there. What did I write? Leave. You see that right there? You see right there? Man's killed the whole conversation. Boom. And in my opinion, she has nothing to, nothing to, no leg to stand on at that point. Because it goes back to what I'm saying. Okay, now let's just clarify what he said here. He said, listen, on week one, I said that I saw the red flags and I put down leave. In fact, before he even says leave, she was like, but you stayed though. But he put down leave. He stayed, why? Because you put stay. And when you put stay, you both have to stay unless, of course, you both say, you know what, we're going to leave. Now, of course, he then said, I, I gave the benefit of the doubt. Purely because of the expert saying this, this and that and giving you guys your pep talk, blah, 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 right? But he put down leave, okay? Because he saw the red flags. So at the end of the day, the way I look at it, we keep it simple here, all right? <laughs> this woman decided to stay week in, week out, and put up with all this stuff that she's saying that he's done, which he probably did do, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's not a sugar coat, you right? He probably did do all of it, but you stayed, and you stayed, and you stayed, you know? So take the accountability that you made the choice to put this relationship, to put this man over yourself you made the choice to put this relationship to put this man before your kids because at the end of the day you could have left earlier to be with your kids and you could have left earlier to save your sanity but you stayed and stayed and stayed and stayed and do you know what to make it worse the whole time that she stayed in the experiment she was out here being toxic as hell to other people's relationships out here flipping causing problems you know with hannah you know what i mean like come on now Nah, this woman needs to check herself with his behavior. So I saw red flags from week one. I was like, you know what? Ben State something, oh please. God, I can't even finish the sentence today. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually doing what you do, so it's very frustrating, <laughs> isn't it? Seriously, keep differences over the past couple of weeks, and the way we approach things. Me, I like to tackle things. If something bothers me, I'm going to address it. Communication, which has been our problem from day one. The icing on the cake for me was that last week at the commitment ceremony, how he speaks to women. Sorry, every time I apologize on behalf of him, it's embarrassing. I'm going to do the hell I am, and I don't put up with this. Oh, so it took you how many weeks to, re to, to, to remember or recognize who the hell you are and what you don't put up with? Come on, get a grip. 
I want to hear them to take accountability. And listen, I'm not happy. I'm not happy attacking her because I dislike Holly. I mean, I do dislike her, but that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm just making a sort the, the pure point of what she's not done the whole season, and that is not take any accountability. All she's done is attack, 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 and she knows that when you attack Alex, he goes defensive mode. But despite the fact that this man has been a, but despite the fact that he has been one hell of a freaking tool the whole season, right? He has taken accountability in certain situations. I have, I don't recall her doing it once. And even when they've had conversations with, even when they had a conversation with one of the experts, right? About boundaries. Holly didn't stick to none of the boundaries. Let's, let's remember that. Personally, I like someone to bring out the best in me also. Like, tell me where I'm going wrong. Don't be scared to, you know, because what am I going to do? Like so refreshing to go home and be heard. That's good. What I can say is it too if you're quite hurt. Yeah, that is good. So it's good you're going home. End of the day, they should have gone home on week one when Alex obviously put down leave. That's just that. He had that in the bag, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's that, you know? I mean, obviously, of course, there's been other ceremonies since then, of course, where they both put stay, you know, because it seemed as if things were, had, had obviously been improved. I reckon, to be honest with you, those weeks when they were both put in stay, Alex probably thought that, yeah, they were good, to be honest with you, because he kept saying it, right? Meanwhile, she was obviously just holding on to issue after issue after issue that she just wasn't addressing and then boom she decided to take all that stuff and then finally explode just just just, just like this and this is a problem she needs to communicate and stop using this excuse about how she's not allowed to have a freaking voice you if you want a voice you give yourself a voice and if you and if you can't give yourself a voice you leave you didn't leave this whole time take that accountability and nonetheless though we'll see what happens obviously in the next episode <laughs> but these two are obviously gone now they both put left leaf and gosh so that's good so they're now gone you know what i mean we're now left the remainder so we shall see how, how that goes um yeah obviously i didn't i didn't speak about nathan and Lacey because they said that they're perfect apparently so you know we'll leave it as that and luke and amy you know it wasn't really that deep to be honest with you so yeah we'll leave, leave it as that these are the main couples to speak about for this one but nonetheless though don't forget to like subscribe and of course peace